Hello everyone, and welcome to another beer review. Now, recently we reviewed, I had it round the right way, false Irish stout. But the problem is, I couldn't quite remember exactly what the flavours were like in comparison. So I couldn't really say whether this had more flavour than this or this. So what I thought, well, best way to do it is to do a complete comparison. So let's compare Forge Stout with Black Heart and Guinness. Now, of course, as usual, when I go and buy these two, I can't get Guinness in a normal can. Apparently they've got a new can out. Mm, look at that, marvellous. I'm sure I've had this one, but apparently it's now a new can. But the thing was, I bought this can years was it a couple of years ago to do a review? So if I bought it a couple of years ago, then how the hell is it new? But anyway. Oh God, don't get me started. But anyway, and I'm in Scotland. So of course this and this cost me a hell of a lot more than this because they have stupid pricing in Scotland. Because apparently you've got to have a minimum pricing in Scotland because they don't trust us to drink because they think, well... We up the prices a bit more, it will stop people getting pissed and becoming violent. Well, guess what? It didn't work. It doesn't change anything. And here's the thing is, this extra money doesn't go to the, the Scottish government. No, it actually just goes to the drink manufacturer. So there you go. Or it's shared between the drink manufacturer and maybe the supermarket, depending what deal they've struck. But this is what happens. So all you're just doing is paying more for something and it's made no difference whatsoever. And I'm thinking about increasing it even more. So there you go. But anyway, shall we pull them out and see what they're like? Just to give you a reminder, the Forged is a 440 ml can and it's 4.2%. The Black Heart Stout is 4.1% and a 440 ml can and usually... Guinness comes in a 440ml can, but this time this is a 538ml can, and it's 4.1%. And if I remember rightly, it's, it's over six quid for a four pack of this. This is another thing. You can never buy any of these by an individual can. Every single one has to be at least the minimum of a four pack. What's that about? You know? What happens if you just want to try it? What happens if oh, I have one can of the heart and I'll try, and I'll try some different ones just to see which ones I might like? No, you've got to buy four of the bloody things. Which, of course, if you do taste it and you don't like it, then you're left with three bloody cans that you don't like. How the hell does that work out? Anyway, let's get it poured. Right. <coughs> Put them out of the way. I'm going to make room for this. Because every spot I've poured of these, they're a bit violent, they tend to kind of piss everywhere. I don't know why, but for some strange reason, something, there's something going on with the widget in here. That the minute you crack it open, it wants to do a fucking fountain. <sighs> so, is that a clean glass? It's supposed to be a bloody clean glass. Something's stuck to the outside of it already. Jesus, let's get me started. Right, here we go. Watch. And I'm just going to go it all the same. People do not throw it right. I don't give a shit. At the end of the day, we're just comparing flavours. That's all we're doing. So, let's get it poured. Leave it to say so, and we'll be on to the next one. That's what it's about. Jesus, right, so that goes there. Forged. There we go. And we'll do the black cart box. There we go. Another... As I said before, the bloody gun, you know. Um, I bought this for almost six pound fifty a bloody pint. Some shit on that bloody table already. Off these cans, Jesus. Six pounds fifty a pint. That's in the Brewdog pub in Exeter. Um, and it tasted exactly the same as the bloody can did. Yeah. And I actually had a can the next day because I had one. And I thought I'm going to try this, and I had the can the next day just to see. And do you know what? Nobody. It was spot on. 
No, I didn't spot one, I didn't. It was a lovely drink. No, it was spot one, I didn't. It was exactly the same. Right, let's get this bug up. Jeez. Good grief, but let's look at that. Oh, it happened in the night. It takes forever, doesn't it? Still let me drop in now. That's what she said. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I'll try. I'll try and get as much as I can out of here into the glass, you know. Um, let that settle just now. Now, as you can see, this is a bit more violent. Look at the bloody head in this bugger compared to this one. So I did tell you that the, the widget in the, the forge is, is a bit violent. Look at the state of that. Um, I'm actually the only one that, well, give a wee top up to give a wee dough. Oh. This is supposed to be roughly to be a more accurate to, to actually get a pint. Maybe people are complaining at, well, why are you doing it 440? Why are you not doing it as 500 mil? You know, because there's some assholes that just keep complaining about that, you know. You just imagine somebody saying, oh, goodness, you know, on the interweb, complaining that I'm sick of having to buy 440 mil cans. Why are you not doing it in 500 mil cans, you know? And they're like, bugger off you, you class. Stop sending messages, girl. I mean, um, stop sending us messages. Um, <laughs> so, look at the state of that. And that's not to me. This and this was called exactly the same. So was that. Just straight in. Put a bloody head in there. It's a, it's a bloody violent. Anyway, let's bring them all back so everybody knows what's this. Guinness. There's a black up. And the abomination. I mean, uh, oh, you, you won't miss the force with a head like that. Anyway. Let's start off with this. What does it smell of? Stout. <laughs> it does, it smells. It smell that. That's strong. I'm, I'm, I'm just out of the corner of my eye. I'm expecting an Amazon delivery. And I said it from 8.15 to 10 p.m. is basically when it's going to arrive. And I just know. I've hung off, hung off, hung off, waiting for it. And I just know, it's not even showing up in the map, you know, like eight stops away. It's not even doing that, but sure enough, when I'm doing this, the bugger will come to the door. But anyway, it smells slightly molasses, slightly kind of bitterish. That's the kind of smell you're getting. Now the black cup. Again, just slightly kind of molasses smell. So yeah, slight bitterness. No. Yep. And the Guinness, the last one. What we getting this smell? Nothing really. No real smell at all. Maybe a light hint of molasses, but out of the three, it's got very little aroma. So there you go. Remember, 4.1, 4.1, 4 4.2. So, let's see what it tastes like. Like I said, the original one, it does taste like a slightly kind of lighter version of Beamish. There's a bit of smokiness to it. And overall, I just feel there's a bit more to it flavour-wise. But let's compare them because this is a problem. I might be kidding myself on and obviously kissing you on as well by saying that this has more flavour than these. No one lets really find out. Black hat. Yeah. This has, a, has more flavour than that. I mean, that's okay. Now, I'm saying okay 
i.e. for an nitro iris stout. That's what I'm talking about. It's okay. I'm not going to say it's brilliant. I'm not going to say it's wonderful. But it's okay. Um, it, it, compared to that, it feels more of a slightly neutral flavour. Um, it doesn't have the smokiness, the hints of smokiness. But what it does have, it, it just feels quite a... Quite a kind of lighter version compared to that. Now, let's try the Guinness. Right, first thing I notice. This is sweeter than these two. And it doesn't have the bitterness. It's lacking the level of bitterness of these other two. This having more bitterness and a little bit more smokiness to it. But this has more bitterness and less sweetness than this. Now, I'm looking on the basis as Guinness has been reported as a lot of women now are starting to drink Guinness out in pubs and things like that. And I can maybe understand that because previously Guinness was an abomination to most women because they didn't like the bitterness and there was no real kind of sweetness to balance, balance this out. This has a bit more sweetness to try and balance this out and the bitterness is lightened up as well. So this has actually changed if you compare them. So I can understand why this is becoming more popular with women because in general, women tend to like sweeter things uh, more than better things. Men like more better things than sweet things. In general, there is exceptions to that rule. But if you look at it, the cases of women like kind of sweeter wines compared to more robust dry wines. Um, that's one of the reasons why I give Demi Sec in the Champagne compared to um, the Brut in Champagne and sparkling wines is because the Brut is a lot more drier, um, less sweet, Demi Sec, which basically means semi-sweet. Um, and that, that's what it's there for. It's there to be more um, attuned to a lady's palate. Now, over the years, women's palates change just like men and everything else, and there is acceptance to that. But this has been adjusted to make it more palatable to both sexes. Whereas this and this is, I'm not saying it's done to be more palatable to men, it's more towards a kind of more traditional flavour profile. So there's more bitterness in both of these compared to this, and this does have a lot more sweetness. Now, this is a bit more smoky, it's a bit more flavour, but this also has a little bit more sweetness than this. Out of the three, this is the less sweetness. But overall, this one has the most flavour. And I'm not saying by huge amounts, but it's noticeable. It looks enough to be noticeable. Um, so this is more flavour and a little bit of smokiness and everything else. This has... Let's say it's number two, it's in the middle of the road, flavour-wise, but it has the less sweetness out of the two, and this is the most sweeter out of the three. Uh, and it also has the least amount of bitterness. So, which one do I prefer? Well, to be totally honest, if you're going down the line like this, this would be my first choice, this would be my second, and this would be my third choice, because this doesn't really taste like a Guinness. Now, it might taste like a Guinness by itself, and you're drinking it, and you're having it, you know, a night on it and everything else, because you're not comparing to it. But see, when you have the three together, this doesn't really taste like a Guinness anymore. And that, that's, that's the big standout for me. Guinness of the past has quite a distinct flavour. 
and bitterness and everything else. This doesn't have that anymore. It just doesn't. So they have changed the recipe. They've got to have changed the recipe because this is definitely... Uh, well, to me, it's almost a completely different drink, to be totally honest. Maybe the same colour, or maybe nitro pour, but it doesn't taste the same at all. This is not too bad. I think because there's lack of sweetness on this one. That's what helps to just give a little bit more on the bitterness side. So I wouldn't say the bitterness is probably that much more than this. But because there's less sweetness, that bitterness edge kind of stands out a little bit more. So it does. And then this one, well... That has more. Kind of the molasses tones with the bitterness and everything else. But overall, it's got a little bit of sweetness. It's got more bitterness than the other two. Um, and even with that bit of sweetness and that, but also a little bit of smokiness. So just overall, this is a nicer. So that is a winner in my book. That is number two, and that, well, I don't know what they were trying to do with that now, and I don't know. I think it's to do with sales, and at the end of the day, if they're making a beer and they've changed the beer to make it more appealing to both sexes, then okay, fine. I, I, I don't really see a problem with that. Um, you could have maybe come in out with a different one. You could have left Guinness the way it was and come out with a, a, a different version that tasted like this and made it more appealing. But then again, do they want it competing and they might lose sales and everything else? So, you know, there's all these different marketing kind of um, considerations that they look at. And let's be totally honest, they probably thought it's a lot easier just slowly but surely change the recipe and then hopefully becomes more appealing to, to everybody. And okay, fine. And at the end of the day, they're doing it to make money. And Diageo, well, let's be totally honest, they're losing money just now. They're not doing very well at all. And the only brand that's actually really going up the way in sales-wise and revenue is the Guinness. All the other brands, including their whiskies and everything else, are all having issues and that type of stuff right now. Just because of they're being affected because of um, the price of the raw materials, the price of the finished product, and obviously other factors as well that are obviously reducing sales because people are struggling to afford to drink how they used to drink. And obviously with the prices going up, that's obviously reduced their uh, purchasing power even more. So there you go. But uh, now... Out of pricing, which is quite interesting, this, if it was in the 440ml can, is the cheapest. This is the next cheapest, and this is the most expensive. Now, even if we factor all that in, this is probably at least, I think it's roughly about up to 25 pence more for a four pack than this. And this is about 25 pence more than this. Would it make a difference if I was buying a four pack? Would it change my kind of choice? No, it wouldn't. If I was going to go for a nitro Irish stout, which sometimes I do, sometimes I just want to have something a bit of a change and all that. And sometimes, especially if I'm in the supermarket, looking about and I'm thinking, Alex, I don't know what I'm going to have tonight. You know, sometimes if Adrian comes over and we're going to have, you know, a takeaway and a couple of beers and watch a movie, we're all basically doing a working weekend. And I'll maybe be in the, the supermarket and thinking, because he's, he's already got his side, so he's already sorted out, and I'm kind of like, what am I going to have? And I'll be looking for a couple of ones to mix with and everything else, and sometimes, again, especially in the summer, I don't want to go for laggers and things like this, so I might go for 
a golden ale or something like that and I'll have maybe four golden ales and get a four pack of, you know, a kind of nitro stout or, or any other type of stouts and things like that and just kind of that. Like another thing is I like in the winter going for Old Peculiar as a four pack and then a four pack of something else, maybe a kind of amber ale or something like that. And uh, enjoy that and, and kind of alternate between the two. And I'll be totally honest, out of the three, I would still buy this before I would buy these two. And I would still buy this before I would buy that. So if, I'd, if I go to Tesco's, I'm usually going to get these two options. I can only get that one or that one, then I'd probably go for that one. But in the answer right now, Asda's got the exclusive of the Forged, but they're also selling Black Heart because I got this four pack in Asda. And unfortunately, I couldn't get the normal cans, but they did have this one. So at the end of the day, all three of these were bought in Asda. And if it was in Asda, I would buy that before I would buy the other two, even though this is more expensive if they're all 440 mil cans. So there you go. So make of it what you will. With this one, you get a bit more alcohol, and you also get a bit more flavour. And at the end of the day, for me, that's more important. Obviously, um, women prefer this right now, but I suppose this is probably, I mean, let's be totally honest, if you're going to get a pint of Guinness in a normal pub, well, you're paying slightly over four quid upwards. Very rarely you'd be paying six pounds fifty or six pounds forty-five, but they were charging the brew dog pub for a pint of Guinness. Um, unless you're maybe kicking about London or something like that. If you're in kind of more normal pubs away from London, then you're going to be between kind of. I don't even know what weather spoons are charging, but trust me, it wouldn't be anywhere near six pounds and fifty anyway. Put it that way. Now. This is the problem is, where does black heart come into? Because let's be totally honest, if you're in a, a pub, you're not going to see this in a pub. You're not going to get this on tap unless you're in a brew dog pub. And at £6.45 a pint, well, we went in there just so we could try it, just to see if there was any difference. It was just a curiosity and there wasn't really any difference. And the way they poured it was an abomination. It was a fucking disaster. It was embarrassing. I felt actually sorry for the, for the last it was actually pouring it, thinking, seriously, who ever told you to do that? I mean, seriously, they make your life so much difficult. So they are, it's making it so difficult. I mean, they should have showed you how to pour it properly. You know, seriously, it's an absolute ball ache for your love. Um, now this one, I think this is available on tap in Ireland. Um, obviously, in Conor McGregor's own pub, but in a few other pubs, are, they're, they're getting it kind of available. So this is now starting to appear in pubs on tap, which then becomes more of a, a competition to this. Whereas this one really isn't a competition in the pint stakes because you can only get this at Brewdog. But in the can stakes, well, it's all head to head, and to be totally honest, that wins number two, number three. There you go. So, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you not agree? Let me know down below. So, thanks for watching. Cheers, and bye for now.